a Wikivide Documentaries production. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Enjoy. Oklahoma City Bombing The Oklahoma City bombing was a domestic terrorist truck bombing on the Alfred P. Murrah Federal Building in downtown Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, United States on April 19, 1995. Perpetrated by Timothy McVeigh and Terry Nichols, the bombing killed 168 people, injured more than 680 others, and destroyed one-third of the building. The blast destroyed or damaged 324 other buildings within a 16-block radius, shattered glass in 258 nearby buildings, and destroyed or burned 86 cars, causing an estimated $652 million worth of damage. Extensive rescue efforts were undertaken by local, state, federal, and worldwide agencies in the wake of the bombing, and substantial donations were received from across the country. The Federal Emergency Management Agency activated 11 of its urban search and rescue task forces, consisting of 665 rescue workers who assisted in rescue and recovery operations. The Oklahoma City bombing was the deadliest terrorist attack on American soil until the September 11 attacks six years later, and it still remains the deadliest incident of domestic terrorism in United States history. Within 90 minutes of the explosion, McVeigh was stopped by Oklahoma Highway Patrolman Charlie Hanger for driving without a license plate and arrested for illegal weapons possession. Forensic evidence quickly linked McVeigh and Nichols to the attack. Nichols was arrested, and within days, both were charged. Michael and Laurie Fortier were later identified as accomplices. McVeigh, a veteran of the Gulf War and a U.S. militia movement sympathizer, had detonated a rider rental truck full of explosives parked in front of the building. His co-conspirator, Nichols, had assisted with the bomb's preparation. Motivated by his dislike for the U.S. federal government and angry about its handling of the Ruby Ridge incident in 1992 and the Waco siege in 1993, McVeigh timed his attack to coincide with the second anniversary of the deadly fire that ended the siege at the Branch Davidian compound in Waco, Texas. The official investigation, known as Oak Bomb, saw FBI agents conduct 28,000 interviews, amass 3.5 short tons of evidence, and collect nearly 1 billion pieces of information. The bombers were tried and convicted in 1997. McVeigh was executed by lethal injection on June 11, 2001, and Nichols was sentenced to life in prison in 2004. Michael and Laurie Fortier testified against McVeigh and Nichols, Michael was sentenced to 12 years in prison for failing to warn the United States government, and Laurie received immunity from prosecution in exchange for her testimony. As a result of the bombing, the U.S. Congress passed the Anti-Terrorism and Effective Death Penalty Act of 1996, which tightened the standards for habeas corpus in the United States, as well as legislation designed to increase the protection around federal buildings to deter future terrorist attacks. On April 19, 2000, the Oklahoma City National Memorial was dedicated on the site of the Murrah Federal Building, commemorating the victims of the bombing. Annual remembrance services are held at the same time of day as the explosion occurred. Motive The chief conspirators, Timothy McVeigh and Terry Nichols, met in 1988 at Fort Benning during basic training for the U.S. Army. Michael Fortier, McVeigh's accomplice, was his army roommate. The three shared interests in survivalism. They expressed anger at the federal government's handling of the 1992 Federal Bureau of Investigation standoff with Randy Weaver at Ruby Ridge as well as the Waco siege, a 1993-51 day standoff between the FBI and Branch Davidian members which began with a botched ATF attempt to execute a search warrant leading to a firefight and ended with the burning and shooting deaths of David Koresh and 75 others. In March 1993, McVeigh visited the Waco site during the standoff, and then again after its conclusion. McVeigh later decided to bomb a federal building as a response to the raids. Target Selection McVeigh later said that he had contemplated assassinating Attorney General Janet Reno, Lon Huayuchi, and others in preference to attacking a building, and after the bombing he said that he sometimes wished he had carried out a series of assassinations instead. He initially intended only to destroy a federal building, but he later decided that his message would be better received if many people were killed in the bombing. 
McVeigh's criterion for potential attack sites was that the target should house at least two of three federal law enforcement agencies, the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms, the Federal Bureau of Investigation, or the Drug Enforcement Administration. He regarded the presence of additional law enforcement agencies, such as the Secret Service or the U.S. Marshals Service, as a bonus. A resident of Kingman, Arizona, McVeigh considered targets in Missouri, Arizona, Texas, and Arkansas. He stated in his authorized biography that he wanted to minimize non-governmental casualties, so he ruled out a 40-story government building in Little Rock, Arkansas, because of the presence of a florist's shop on the ground floor. In December 1994, McVeigh and Fortier visited Oklahoma City to inspect McVeigh's target, the Alfred P. Murrah Federal Building. The Murrah Building had been previously targeted in October 1983 by white supremacist group The Covenant, The Sword, and The Arm of the Lord including founder James Ellison and Richard Snell. The group had plotted to park a van or trailer in front of the federal building and blow it up, with rockets detonated by a timer. After Snell's appeal for murdering two people in unrelated cases was denied, he was executed the same day as the Murrah bombing. The nine-story building, built in 1977, was named for a federal judge, and housed 14 federal agencies, including the DEA, ATF, Social Security Administration, and recruiting offices for the Army and Marine Corps. The Murrah Building was chosen for its glass front, which was expected to shatter under the impact of the blast, and its adjacent large, open parking lot across the street, which might absorb and dissipate some of the force, and protect the occupants of nearby non-federal buildings. In addition, McVeigh believed that the open space around the building would provide better photo opportunities for propaganda purposes. The attack was planned to take place on April 19, 1995, to coincide with the anniversary of the Waco siege, and the 220th anniversary of the battles of Lexington and Concord. Gathering Materials McVeigh and Nichols purchased or stole the materials they needed to manufacture the bomb, which they stored in rented sheds. In August 1994, McVeigh obtained nine kinestics from gun collector Roger E. Moore, and ignited the devices with Nichols outside Nichols' home in Harrington, Kansas. On September 30, 1994, Nichols bought 40 50 pounds bags of ammonium nitrate fertilizer from Mid-Kansas Coop in McPherson, Kansas, enough to fertilize 12.5 acre of farmland at a rate of 160 pounds of nitrogen per acre, an amount commonly used for corn. Nichols bought an additional 50 pounds bag on October 18, 1994. McVeigh approached Fortier and asked him to assist with the bombing project, but he refused. McVeigh and Nichols then robbed Moore in his home of $60,000 worth of guns, gold, silver, and jewels, transporting the property in the victim's own van. McVeigh wrote a letter to Moore in which he claimed that the robbery had been committed by government agents. Items that were stolen from Moore were later found in Nichols' home and in a storage shed that he had rented. In October 1994, McVeigh showed Michael Fortier and his wife, Laurie, a diagram he had drawn of the bomb he wanted to build. McVeigh planned to construct a bomb containing more than 5,000 pounds of ammonium nitrate fertilizer, mixed with about 1,200 pounds of liquid nitromethane, and 350 pounds of Tovex, including the weight of the 1655 US gallon drums in which the explosive mixture was to be packed. The bomb would have a combined weight of about 7,000 pounds. McVeigh had originally intended to use hydrazine rocket fuel, but it proved to be too expensive. During the Chief Auto Parts Nationals National Hot Rod Association Drag Racing Championship Series event, at the Texas Motorplex, McVeigh posed as a motorcycle racer and initially attempted to purchase 55 U.S. gal drums of nitromethane on the pretense that he and some fellow bikers needed the fuel for racing. Despite the lack of nitromethane-powered motorcycles at the meeting, and not having an NHRA competitor's license, denied by one representative, Steve Lassure, after being suspicious of McVeigh's actions and attitudes, he was then permitted to purchase three barrels from another representative, Tim Chambers. Chambers questioned the purchase of three barrels when typically only one five gallons of nitromethane, he noted, would be purchased by a top fuel Harley rider, even though the class was not raced that weekend. Lassure reported the incident. 
to the FBI immediately after rejecting McVeigh's request. McVeigh rented a storage space in which he stockpiled seven crates of 18 Intovex sausages, 80 spools of shock tube, and 500 electric blasting caps, which he and Nichols had stolen from a Martin Marietta aggregates quarry in Marion, Kansas. He decided not to steal any of the 40,000 pounds of anfo he found at the scene, as he did not believe it to be powerful enough. McVeigh made a prototype bomb using a plastic Gatorade jug containing ammonium nitrate prills, liquid nitromethane, a piece of Dovex sausage, and a blasting cap. The prototype was detonated in the desert to avoid detection. Later, speaking about the military mindset with which he went about the preparations, he said, you learn how to handle killing in the military. I faced the consequences, but you learn to accept it. He compared his actions to the atomic bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, rather than the attack on Pearl Harbor, reasoning it was necessary to prevent more lives from being lost. On April 14, 1995, McVeigh paid for a motel room at the Dreamland Motel in Junction City, Kansas. The following day he rented a 1993 Ford F-700 truck from Ryder under the name Robert D. Kling, an alias he adopted, because he knew an army soldier named Kling with whom he shared physical characteristics, and, because it reminded him of the Klingon warriors of Star Trek. On April 16, 1995, he drove to Oklahoma City with fellow conspirator Terry Nichols, where he parked a getaway car several blocks away from the Alfred P. Murrah Federal Building. The nearby Regency Towers Apartments lobby security camera recorded images of Nichols' blue 1984 GMC pickup truck on April 16, after removing the license plate from the car. He left a note covering the vehicle identification number plate that read, Not abandoned. Please do not do will move by April 23 both men then returned to Kansas building the bomb on April 17 18 1995 McVeigh and Nichols removed the bomb supplies from their storage unit in Harrington Kansas where Nichols lived and loaded them into a rider rental truck they then drove to Geary Lake State Park where they nailed boards onto the floor of the truck to hold the 13 barrels in place and mix the chemicals using plastic buckets and a bathroom scale. Each filled barrel weighed nearly 500 pounds. McVeigh added more explosives to the driver's side of the cargo bay, which he could ignite at close range, with his Glock 21 pistol in case the primary fuses failed. During McVeigh's trial, Laurie Fortier stated that McVeigh claimed to have arranged the barrels in order to form a shaped charge. This was achieved by tamping the aluminum side panel of the truck with bags of ammonium nitrate fertilizer to direct the blast laterally towards the building. Specifically, McVeigh arranged the barrels in the shape of a backwards J. He later said that for pure destructive power, he would have put the barrels on the side of the cargo bay closest to the Murrah building. However, such an unevenly distributed 7,000 pounds load might have broken an axle, flipped the truck over, or at least caused it to lean to one side, which could have drawn attention. All or most of the barrels of ANNM contained metal cylinders of acetylene intended to increase the fireball and the brisance of the explosion. McVeigh then added a dual-fuse ignition system accessible from the truck's front cab. He drilled two holes in the cab of the truck under the seat, while two holes were also drilled in the body of the truck. One green cannon fuse was run through each hole into the cab. These time-delayed fuses led from the cab through plastic fish tank tubing conduit to two sets of non-electric blasting caps which would ignite around 350 pounds of high-grade explosives that McVeigh stole from a rock quarry. The tubing was painted yellow to blend in with the truck's livery, and duct-taped in place to the wall to make it harder to disable by yanking from the outside. The fuses were set up to initiate through shock tubes. The 350 pounds of Dovex Blast tried gel, sausages, which would in turn set off the configuration of barrels. Of the 13 filled barrels, 9 contained ammonium nitrate and nitromethane, and 4 contained a mixture of the fertilizer and about 4 U.S. gal of diesel fuel. Additional materials and tools used for manufacturing the bomb were left in the truck to be destroyed in the blast. After finishing the truck bomb, the two men separated. Nichols returned home to Harrington and McVeigh with the truck to Junction City. Brought to you by Wikivideo Documentaries. Would you like to know more?